When Tripoli was falling to rebel forces, Human Rights Watch found abandoned documents in the external security building. They were in folders marked U.S. and there were literally hundreds of them and they were communications between the Libyan intelligence agency and the CIA. The documents showed in black and white the U.S. rendered individuals who were opposed to Gaddafi back to Libya. We were able to talk to a number of these Libyans who were up until a year ago detained in Libyan custody. They alleged in these interviews that not only were they sent back to Libya by the U.S., but before they were returned, they were held for long periods of time in U.S. custody in Afghanistan and subject to very serious physical abuses and torture. One of the more disturbing cases we came across was that of Mohammed Shoraya. He was picked up in Pakistan and then transferred to a U.S.-run detention facility in Afghanistan. He was then held there for 16 months and subject to very serious abuses. Shoraya gave very detailed, very credible testimony of having been waterboarded. And he said this happened numerous times, more times than he could count. The U.S. has said that it only waterboarded three people, and it has provided the names of the people that it waterboarded, and it said specifically how many times the waterboarding occurred. The fact that a new case exists casts very serious doubt on those prior statements and opens the question, what else has gone on in these sites that we don't know? He provided the most detailed testimony, drawing diagrams of his cell and the different torture instruments that were used on him while he was in CIA custody. At the time these renditions occurred, both the U.S. and the U.K. were courting Gaddafi. They were trying to get him to give up his weapons of mass destruction program and to cooperate on terrorism. At the same time, Gaddafi was very interested in having his enemies abroad brought back to Libya. The Department of State, in their human rights reports, had documented the abuse that was going on in Libyan prisons at the time. So they were very well aware of the abuse that these individuals faced, and they returned them to Libya nonetheless. The U.S. needs to come clean on what happened in these facilities, who was held there, how long they were detained, and what happened to them. It also needs to provide redress to the victims of these abuses and prosecute those who authorized the abuses.